Okay, so first off, I just want to say, I get it. You get what? High school. Kamala. Kamala. Another adventure shirt. Cute. She thinks I'm some kind of weirdo. You were a weirdo. Boys. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> you're kind of on my shirt. Sorry. But you're staring out the window in your little fantasy land. Kamala, hey. Already? Really? Come on, like... Do I have to figure out my whole future before lunch, or is your like... Maybe they're right. I spend too much time in fantasy land. That is not you. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who save the world. That's a fantasy, too. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the MC University Extra Credit, where we're going to go ahead and talk about dabble actually into the MCU and see what's going on over there on the actual timeline. Uh, this week, of course, we're going to be talking about Miss Marvel 2022's Miss Marvel, uh, a show that I honestly grew with the character a little bit, reading just like maybe like. A couple issues here or there and seeing the character thought the character was cool had no other history other knowledge and totally happy to be blown away of course joining me today is you know him as my co-host over there at the point in progress podcast coming back very shortly uh you also know him as beard in the hair harv how are you doing harv i'm doing well man i'm doing well i'm excited to get back into the the role the the, the groove of things with pimp yes um but getting getting back into the, that kind of stuff like that, that kind of type thing, and uh, my I, I want to say my introduction to this character was Marvel's Avengers for the PlayStation <laughs> console. That was uh, when it came out for PC, PlayStation, all that kind of stuff. Got uh, it. Last was it last year, I think that's when it, was, it came out. I think it was about two years ago now. At this point, two years ago now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was the first time I uh, I got introduced to Kamala Khan. Actually, that's good. <laughs> that's that's awesome because in, in our discord uh you're the only one that i talk to about the show at all if anything we try to leave as subtle hints as possible because we would love for the other people to watch it hopefully yeah. we'll get them on board but yeah no you're you're the one i wanted to talk to about this because like i said we've been geeking out every week when the new episode comes out there, there there's so there's there's some other stuff to, to the show but i do feel like it is one of their um one of their best shows that they've they've had that actually landed its fucking yeah. it landed its 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 last episode yeah. and i'm so happy stuck the finale because, yeah because it's been so bad with like moon knight and like uh the recent shows that have come out it's just yes. so it's just like we have these hopes and they just don't they just don't fill those hopes because like either the, we because like i don't know if moon knight's ever going to come back true right we don't know so if we if we want this like connection to like the bigger universe but we don't get it right yes. so it's just kind of it's kind of weird and then with this one we actually got it which was awesome we got so many things that i'm very excited to talk about but until then of course uh let me talk a little bit about the creator uh or the creators of miss marvel of course she was created in 2014 by editors i think sana uh amanat steve wacker G. Willow Wilson, an artist, uh, Adrian uh, Alfonia, and James McKelvey is also a part of this team that's sort of brought this character to life. Of course, the writer, uh, G. Willow Wilson, basically created the basis of this character for many, many issues with her first initial run, I believe, back in 2014. Um, and yeah, character is still in the comics today, doing some really cool, interesting things. And they made their first major, I would say, debut in... in in media and games was of course marvel's avengers which is crazy um that character is in the some other ones but she was the star of that game in, in a lot of ways and to see her now in live action i'm very curious how everyone thinks of it, if, if if it uh, carried over but you already know we're already gushing about it so <laughs> we'll get right on into it um did you so your history with the character was just the video games what did you think of that uh, characterization in the video games and what you got from it I liked it. I thought. I thought. I thought, she, I thought the the actress that plays the role, the father, because I only got through like the first like a couple, like you know, a couple like four or five hours of it. Of course. That. But like, I think they nailed like the the dynamic between the mother or the the father and the, the and the daughter. I think they did a really really good job. Yeah. Um. But like, 
I didn't see too much like after that, right? Because like it was more like, oh, Kamala's gonna go to the Avenger complex or uh, yeah. stuff like that, and they're gonna go see Bruce Banner and like that kind of type thing, right? So she, the good thing about her is like what she had in this show is she had what it, in in the game she had cracked those jokes. She was witty. Yes. She knew like what what she was like. You know, she's she's smart. She's like she has like that that bubbly personality, right? Yes. Which is great. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And oh, I can't decide to just jump on the table. Uh, <laughs> uh, as a introduction of the character, I did read some of the comics beforehand, and now after the show is is finally found, I've actually read. I think I've read like several runs now. I've read up to up to like two thousand eighteen ish, so about four years of this character, and uh, I've grown to love not only her as a character, I've grown to love her family, and I've grown to love all of her side characters. So now to see them in live action and them the the things that are similar and the things that are different, I love them both equally, which is phenomenal. So I was happy that with that little changes that they made. But um, ge- give me your general impression on the show. I mean, were you even excited for the show when this was first announced? I, I was, I was trepidatious on it mainly because um, being like so. So I'm not Muslim. I am not uh, like the uh, the people that are uh, the people that are, uh, depicted in the show are Muslim, and I, I that that doesn't pertain to me. But I'm also a brown person, right? So like, I kind of put us in like almost the same kind of type thing, right? Uh, but like. I was kind of afraid that they wouldn't nail the dynamics of who these characters are. Yeah. Because Marvel usually doesn't nail the dynamics when it comes to people of color, when it comes to, especially when it comes to, like, brown skin, right? Usually they're people that are, like, either attacking something, they're terrorists, or something like that, right? But, man, I, after, like, the second, first episode, right after the first episode, I had to tweet out, I was like, this is exactly what what my childhood com- like was like how her family is her family's a little bit more like bubbly and all that kind of stuff my family's not like that but like <laughs> the way that they they treat like the way that they treat her and, and also her being a girl is also a different kind of type thing because i saw that in our, in our mm-hmm. culture so much yeah um but like seeing how they translated that onto the onto the show i I was flabbergasted. I was so excited to like see the next episode and how what they how they handle like the next part of it. So I was scared. I was actually legit scared to see how they're going to handle all that stuff. Yeah, and as someone who, as you're saying, like is when only exposed to any part of that culture, I'm either they are the bad guy in something, they're the other, they're they're not the heroes in most things that I've watched, and to actually have this show, this Marvel show, to be the general focus, like. From beginning to end, that is to me the major focus because to me this is not the most traditional MCU story that they've told. There are elements of it, and I think that some things are not as strong and others in that in that way that they go about it. But the way that they land the ending is far more satisfying in my opinion because of it. Because yeah. it's so tied to both not only just the family but the community and just the culture as a whole. This it's it's filled to the brim with stuff. It, it's funny because like. Um... That is pretty much how our culture is, right? Like when I when I was growing up, uh, we ne- we used to have this close knit culture in in our temple mm-hmm. that all the families used to go to, like they do here for the mosque. All the families go to the mosque and then yes. just kind of hang out with with each other, right? Like that's that's how you build a community. You build it through like the, these temples and mosques and stuff like that, and then you go go hang out. You have these little like like these fundraisers for like the for the temple and stuff like that and like that's where you meet a lot of your like a lot of your family friends and all that kind of stuff too and then you have these little groups of like people where like you have the aunties that like keep gossiping about people <laughs> and all that kind of stuff it it, it it is crazy mario how true all of that is <laughs> that it, it 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 baffles my mind that they nailed all, all, all of that kind of stuff that's no it's uh, again as someone who like who is not necessarily a part of that culture but seeing it live and seeing it in person like the way that they make it feel lived into the world and how 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 real it feels it actually is really really wonderful the thing that and i'll bring it out now like there is a moment i believe in episode three i want to say 
where it's both um, Miss Marvel and her friend Nakia in the bathroom. And they have that conversation about how she, Nakia does feels like she can never be one in two worlds, right? Because she's, yeah. I believe, I believe she's mixed, and so it's partially like she's not Muslim enough, or she's not she's white skinned enough. Like it's it's that weird dichotomy, and I that is like me to a T, where I'm I'm never Hispanic enough, or I'm never Italian enough. It's just yeah. one or the other, and so. Yeah. I totally felt it. It made me cry pretty hard. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I teared up a lot during the show. Um, just because overall, just the the general um, feeling that the show kind of gives you as you watch it is just so welcoming and fun. And uh, as much as that there is danger in this show, and there there, there is, um, I just never, it never gave away to the point where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm mad that you know, a big monster is not here. A big known villain is here or any of that. It really is just simply, I'm just happy to be around these characters. That's, that's kind of where I was like, yeah. If he, the, the villains MCU is really not done well for the most part. Yeah. And I feel like when it comes to this show, I feel like the villain isn't the most like, it's, it's not good. It's not great. No, uh, <laughs> I, will, I will say that right, right from the get go, but I think it's not the focus of the show, right? The focus of the show is bringing this family out and like, and then uh, telling the mass, like, tell, telling everybody, like, this is what it feels like to be in in a family like this, and then being different also, yeah, in in many different ways, yeah, and then showing that, yeah, absolutely, either being, uh, you know, just cultural wise, but also even like the fact that she feels outside because she has these powers now and doesn't know what to deal with it, or you know. Has can only confide in certain people, and then other people get mad when they don't get told. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's such yeah. that 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 dichotomy there. Um, I want to ask really quickly: What did you think of uh, Iman Vellani's portrayal of this character? This being her first major thing ever, she basically answered a I casting mean, call, <laughs> and they're like, "You're it." She's taking it a stride, I will say. Like, that's, she's, yeah, she's taking, she's doing, the, she's soaking it up as much as she possibly can, and that's good for her because she's young. She should, she should do that. Yes, and I think, I think she nailed it. I think she did. She did an awesome job. Her, her family. She did her, even the family that she like that that her father, brother, her brother is, is so funny because he's like, so good. Like, yeah, he's <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, like no, no, she she nailed that position. She nailed that job. Uh, she kind of. So she's from, like, a bigger city, so it doesn't really relate to, like, who are, like, you know, like, she's from Jersey City, so it's, like, a bigger place and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, like, the way she um, has little, like, nods to, like, her culture and stuff like that and not being, like, completely, like, citified, like, being in the city kind of type thing. Yeah, yeah. Really kind of, like, went a long way, in my opinion. Especially with her parents. Especially with her parents. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, dude, when she when she left... And came when she left to AvengerCon, came back, and her mom was sitting there. <laughs> I was like, I've, 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 I've in that, I've been in that position <laughs> so many fucking times <laughs> where I walk in and my mom's just sitting there. It's like, do you know what time it is? <laughs> do you know where the fuck you were? <laughs> do you understand then, the ramifications of this? <laughs> yeah, and then, and then it's just like, do you understand? Like, if something happened to you, you could have got hurt. Yeah. And then her, like, just having that, like, just the blood, like, you know, draining from her face, be like, yeah, I, like, she felt so bad and, like, didn't want them to go through that, like, you know, like, it's, it's, she nailed that aspect. She, she really, she really did a good job. Yeah. The, the across the board, I mean, obviously, back to Iman Vlani really quick. Nails, nails, obviously, just the little things, but the micro things that she does with her face is hilarious. She's really funny. Great timing. And then I love the the song that she's like, like in her own little world. It was, it was so good. Yes, so good, so good. And yeah, just her interactions with you know some pretty big, if, if I'm not mistaken, Pakistani actors that have been in major major films and stands up to them, like really shares a screen with them, and it's wonderful. Especially the last scene, what we'll talk about probably in a bit, but. Uh, really wonderful. And then to get to the family, like you have, of course, the brother who is hilarious and he has some fun things on how he connects later to um, the uh, story at the last episode, which is fantastic. Um, I love his wife. I love the, that whole situation. Seeing, 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 oh, man, again, back to the culture, like seeing all these different things of like how people interact in these festivals, their own individual like holidays, weddings. And then you hear phrases that you hear from these characters that you hear in other movies, and it's depicted totally messed up. 
But when you hear it, it's just like there's some actual love, like the um, Asimilakum stuff like that. Like, all- yeah, with that, that, yeah. So when it comes to that, or like uh, Allahu Akbar, which yes. is like something that is very um, negatively portrayed all the because, time, uh, all the time, all yeah. the time. Because because like it, it, it's it's one of those things where like you're praise it's it's pretty much praise god right that's yeah. pretty much what you're saying right so like you do like they do that and then like something blows up or something like that right yeah. but in this one they're celebrating a wedding which is yes. what that, which is what they do that that is how you do a muslim wedding is like you you keep repeating allahu akbar cuz like you're you're praising god for this for this re- for this union right yes so like seeing that is just how it how they handle that it it if it, it, it for people, I feel like it felt jarring because it's different. It's in a, it's in a different context. Yeah. Well, th- right. It, it's also the way they're saying it too. It just it's endearing. It's not has no ill will whatsoever. Obviously, whenever you see it in any other fucking medium, and yeah. that's why when I noticed it, I mean, it was like, like, oh, this is culture. Like, this is what culture is. This is not you know this sort of grandization that we do, this radicalization that we do, um, this is what like a, day, a life in this world is. And it felt homely. It felt like I was a part of it. The fact that you yeah. see Bruno fucking dancing his ass off and he knows the moves, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's just as yeah. equipped to be in this world as anybody else. Even if he's, like, <laughs> he's inside the family. He's, he's part of the family pretty much. Yeah. He's pretty, he's pretty much part of the family. Except like, no when, one when, will when, let him to date him. Nobody will let them date him. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's that, that's against the family thing. Okay, that's against the family thing. But like, the one of the one of the things that uh, that happened when when the uh, damage control is it damage control that comes in? Yes. Is that who the company? Yes. Is that who the thing is? Yeah. yeah. Damage control comes into the mosque, and right when they like showed their shoes, it's like, oh fuck, no, no, get them out, get them out. <laughs> no, just throw them, just throw them out, dude. You can't. That that is that is one of the most disrespectful things you could possibly do. In like a mosque or a temple, is put your shoes on and go, and go into that room. Yeah, no, nah, you can't do that kind of shit. No. And then like it hurt me like viscerally. I was like, oh my god, that is terrible. What are you doing? Yeah. But I get they 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 put that in there to to, to like convey that like the, these are like their beliefs and this is what they this is what they run their world by and like this is what uh, this culture is. And we want to show you guys what this culture is, because like all the people that work at the mosque and stuff, like they're great characters, great characters. Yeah, the sheikh himself is hilarious, especially at the end. So good, so good. Yeah, so good. There's a couple of things I wanna I wanna talk about before we get to the next part. Sure. So the after credits stuff that yeah. that they show. Um, Which, by the way, spoilers the, from going on. We you know we like this show, so we're talking about spoilers yeah, yeah. going this forward. Is, this, is, this isn't even about like the actual like what happens in the show. Oh, so, okay. After after the show ends, there's always a song that plays. Oh, right? okay. At the end, so I was very interested to see like what they would do after the first time because like let's, let's be honest, the beats are fucking good. Yeah. And really then, good. but like the, they picked strategic songs for each episode. So like for for example, episode two, which is her getting her powers, like finally, like you know, getting her powers and knowing what 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 what's like what's up with her and stuff like that. Yeah, and I feel and I feel like that's the episode she also like like saves that saves the kid. Yes, yeah, saves the, the like, kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then she's just like, okay, yeah, this is what I can do. Just you know, get out. Like she's got the confidence, right? She's got the yes. confidence that she can do this. And the song that plays is called Peachy Hut, which is like back away, like I like very confidently, like back away, like I got this kind of confident thing. <laughs> And just that's what the song dictates. It's like, it's just like I'm a confident person, a confident person that like I know what I'm doing and or well, not what I'm doing. Like I am going to be able to do what I want because I have like this confidence, right? Which really hit me. Like I was like, man, okay, that's a, that's a good, it's a good, uh, a good throw. When it came to episode, for example, episode five, when they brought when they closed the gate, yes, and. The the um the Jin uh I forgot what her name is Najima, Najima yeah and when she died, there's a song that plays that they call uh, there's a song called Ujum which is like a song about finally accepting who you are and trying to like and it's a conversation between two people two women that one is trying to figure out who she is the other one is telling her that. If you just embrace who you are, that all that stuff will just kind of come into place. Mm. Like you can't change stuff. Like you can't change the big things. Like you can't change all these like crazy things in your life, but you can do the little things to make yourself feel better and kind of like just 
be a better person yourself and that that'll that'll bring you to a place where like you can feel confident about yourself and be who you are and like that that those are the things that i was just like man that hits hard because yeah i don't you don't expect that kind of stuff you just don't expect it that adds so much context obviously to that scene specifically which is of course uh that character sacrificing herself in a way, I guess, to closing the rift, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yep. at the same time, giving her son a chance, um, even though he's not aware of what's happening, but he has this now newfound ability. Um, yeah. yeah, that that is fascinating. The fact that there's going to be probably 80%, you would say, 90% of people that won't have that context. And Yeah, no, no, yeah. nobody's really going to know that context because, yeah. like, like one people will probably just go right through the the um the, the credits and stuff yeah and it's, it's pointed for that episode because that also shows us the the backstory right yes before the the uh, partition let's, happened let's 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 talk about that and the handle of history and, and and all that because again this show uh it really just illustrates my lack of knowledge of anything having to do with india even uh of course uh <laughs> gandhi none of that and I've learned so much in the span of these six weeks that I, all, all it makes me want to do now is learn more. And I feel like yeah. that is such an interesting thing. But even the little context they give, which this story, which I know they kept mentioning, and I figured it was a big thing in history, but I had no idea we were going to actually go there <laughs> and yeah. actually experience it and for this show to follow that. Uh, I, I mean, uh, do you, what is your knowledge of this history? Obviously, this is not something within your culture, but... Were you aware of this beforehand? The show, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, um, this is this is a big context between like my my, uh, my parents weren't there when the partition happened. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were old enough. I think they were like like the tail end of it, cause, like 1947. Yeah. It's it's like this. It's like say you you run a place for a long time, and people are working there. They have no managerial experience at all, yes. but you do. You have all the managerial experience. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to leave this place because I want to go I want to go do something else. And then you leave this place to people that have zero managerial experience. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much what happened in, in the partition. The, you get, you have all these people that are Muslim, they're uh, they're Hindu, they're Punjabi, they're like they're, they're all these different mixing pots they're not going to live like it's so hard for them to live together right because they're all different cultures so after uh 1947 when they gained independence from from the british after the mahatma gandhi thing and all that kind of stuff after he got assassinated and when they finally got and when it finally uh went through they carved out land for pakistan and, and india the problem was getting people to those respective places that was the problem yeah so in india they were driving out the Muslims, and then in Pakistan, they were driving out the Indians. So, mm-hmm. like, it was just, like, a, 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 a very, very dark time when it come, came to that. Because, like, you know, in the show, the uh, the husband of, um, I forgot her name now uh, as well. San- Sansa, I think, or Sanja. Hold on. I'll pull it up. I'm going to find but, it. But, yeah, sh- sh- her, her His name is Hassan. And, I know that. Yeah, his, his name is Hassan, yeah. Uh, Hassan is Muslim and she's Indian, right? So yes. he li- he's a Muslim living in an Indian village, and that's why he does like his flowers aren't selling or anything like that. Like nobody's buying from him because of the partition is happening and stuff like that, right? And then seeing yeah, all Asa. of the trains, yeah. Isa, yeah, okay, Asa, yeah. yeah. And then seeing all the trains and stuff like that, that is what happened because you had to load as many people as you possibly could on trains and get them to yeah the border. And the border was weren't even like trains. People used to walk like people that used to be a border, and people used to walk across like Muslims on this side, Indians on this side. Yeah. And there were always clashes going back and forth when it came to that. Not true. Yeah, I mean, in terms of them being able to root this history point into the story, um, yeah. all the way to the characters, I, I just found it again adding to the powerfulness of the show, um, allowing me to very much be connected and care about what is in something that I, I, I can't even fathom experiencing and to see images. I mean, it's very, I mean, I'm sure what we saw was very much a PG clean version of it. It honestly yeah, reminded me the also, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. There's also, you have to push this story, right? You have yes. to push the, the, the Miss Marvel story onto it as well. So like, yeah. like, like, yeah, it's going to be kind of like at the end of it, it was a little, cor- you know, it was a little corny where she like, you know, puts like the little stairs and all that kind of stuff. And, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that kind of type thing. It's like, yeah. But like, 
I guess like it's it's the wrapping that's around it, right? That's that's yes. what you're really there for. No, absolutely, uh, for sure. Um, I was saying like the imagery that it invoked to me is whenever I watch, say, like a World War II film, um, and a lot of ways of people being stuffed into into trains, and it's not a, it's not a good look. Um, yeah. but I still found it brave for them to tell a story, and in a mainstream Marvel thing, um. You know, I'm very curious how they're going to handle things going forward. Um, they had a good, they had a good uh, different, like the good amount of like when they're talking Hindi and they're talking uh, English. They had a good like a mixture together and stuff like that, which was great. Yeah, no, it was good to see. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I want to probably talk about his connections to the MCU. I think this would probably be a good point to bring that up. Um, starting with even, I would say, even references within the culture, which I found awesome. If you watch Eternals, um, a lot of that stuff sort of laid in there because uh, one of the Eternals is played by Camille Nanjiani, who uh, I forgot the name. I forgot the name of his, uh, his actual Eternals character, but the the character he's a, he's a Bollywood actor. He's right? a Bollywood act. Well, he's a Bolly, legacy Bollywood actor because he plays both his grandfather, his father, and himself. Um, and so I love that in this show they reference that in Kingo. a way Kingo. Kingo yeah Kingo who they reference like I like senior uh, Kingo more than I like younger Kingo like stuff like that and I found that just absolutely fun and fascinating was there anything that you saw I've, I've never watched the turtles I haven't got I haven't got to that movie yet it's, I <laughs> think I again I'm one of the outliers that does enjoy it for what it is I understand that it's it's a tone piece in a lot of ways it's kind of long but I think it's worth putting on in the background at least try to explain what the <laughs> fuck happened at the end of it um, and how we've never talked about it since. So I'm curious how nobody the, talks about this movie anymore. It's, so, no, it's weird. Major things happen in it and no one saying anything about it. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes, but for there at least to be somewhat of a connection to that character, that was fantastic. Was there any other, well, we can talk about adventure con for, for days. There's so many references. Oh, in so Avengers. many references in there. Uh, I, what was your favorite thing in adventure? Con? My, Okay, so I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think back of this episode. I'm trying to because it was the first episode, right? It was the very first episode, which very first is episode. a very yeah, uh, very sparkly episode because there's a lot of yeah. stuff going on in that one. I, the one, the goofiest thing was the hammer swinging back and forth, and her just <laughs> clinging on to dear life and trying to stick on uh, onto it. I thought that pretty funny. For, I, uh, I for a lot of it. I did too, especially because she's reminded like a cartoon, just like straight, just stuck on this like exactly, hammer. Yeah. And clearly, I, you know, in any other movie, it's like she would have got brutally murdered. But in this one, it's a cartoon. Like I'm stuck to this thing. Um, I personally enjoyed uh, hearing a lot of the same music cues from older films. Uh, they, of course, play the Star Spangled Man um, in that scene as well. But I love the fact that everyone just refers to. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Scott Lang, aka uh, Ant Man's podcast, about details about stuff. So I hope yeah. that they they bring up this podcast uh, in the Ant Man movie. I think it'd be hilarious to watch him actually like try to do one, do OBS, <laughs> do all. This I, stuff. I, I I like the the self nods in the show that kind of make the world feel a little bit bigger. Yes, right. Like um, even at the very start of the show where they're talking about like she she wants she she wants like a doctor strange kind of like you know cape or something like that yes. like that kind of type thing it kind of brings the world kind of more together this somehow somehow and the MCU has made the marvel cinematic universe more like lived in the star wars than star wars somehow <laughs> And I and Star Wars has been going on since the seventies, and I don't understand how <laughs> that's possible. But like, it it in my opinion, like it the Marvel has like killed it when it comes to world building. Yeah, I mean, they had the time, I guess, to dedicate literally many, many more movies than Star Wars has. But obviously, there are so many small little itty bitty tidbits in there. Like even laying in uh, the fact that the damage control. Okay, this is actually fun. If I don't know if you noticed this, the damage control that we see in this. Is the same damage control that we see at the uh, in the middle of Spider-Man: No Way Home. It's the same guy, and the robots. Yeah, it's the, same, it's the chief guy, right? That, the that's same chief guy. Yeah, the fun yeah, guy is like yeah. popcorn, popcorn. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He, uh, if you remember, that was the when they. I think he gave away Edith to them. The glasses. Those robots that you use in Far From Home to make the the actual like Stark Tech like. Uh, 
generators are the same robots they used to fight uh, them at the beginning of the uh, during the middle of the show. That like chased her in the alleyway, blew up uh, the Circle Q. Oh, like the drones. And stuff. They're the oh. same drones from the Far Away, Far From Home uh, movie. Which damage so, control was created in uh, Homecoming, actually. Yeah, so so I guess damage. Oh, from yeah, yeah, that would make yeah. sense. Yeah, uh, because of the drones are coming. Wouldn't the wouldn't those drones from? Uh... They're from Far From Home. Yeah, and then okay. from Mysterio, right? From Mysterio, and then in yeah. No Way Home, Spider Man gets arrested, and then yeah. they do the whole thing. So it looks like, like it looks like damage control is based in New York. Yeah, they're based right. in New York. Yeah. They are created by Tony Stark. So the fact that they're using Tony Stark tech, which again, yeah. the actual there's a the um, the beam that shoots like sound, yeah. uh, in the cars, uh, which is a great scene with uh, <laughs> her breaking the cars. Like, are you guys okay? Yeah, okay. Night light. I love that scene. That was great. Yeah, uh, that they're the same ones from uh, the Incredible Hulk. They use those in Incredible oh. Hulk. So, oh, yeah, they do. They they're, do. I they're, remember that. Yeah, but they were Stark Tech at the time. So, yeah, the fact that there's those little things that are in, if you notice it for a second, you're like, oh, shit, that's cool. That's how they tie into the grander world. Um, but this show breaks up the world in several ways. And the first one I do want to talk about the fact is the bangle, right? So this is yeah. the second object that we've seen that has some source of power that glows in a certain color, comparing it to the Shang-Chi uh, Ten Rings. So, you, yeah, so we got the ten rings and we have the bangles, right? Yes, you know? we have the bangles. So supposedly there's two bangles from what I heard in the in the dialogue in one of the scenes. In that temple, there is the ten rings. You can see the, the logo yep. on the floor. So clearly they're connected in some way. And then in Shang-Chi, uh, the Carol Danvers shows up at the pro screen. So she's aware of these things. Um, very curious of how many more items we will see. Are these sort of like interesting? Like I'm very curious how it's going to work. Because... What I remember in comics, there was a it was a DC versus Marvel comic, and their whole deal was is that they have these sort of uh, items in the world that were on each planet, and they basically had to steal the uh, artifacts from each other, and they had to fight. Whoever had the most artifacts wins the battle, and it was against you know people putting fight. And I'm wondering if that's going to have connections to potentially Kang in the future. Mm. I'm just curious if that's going to end up being like the multiverses are going to have to cross over, fight each other and steal these different artifacts from the different movies. Yeah. Different locations. Cause like maybe it's one place doesn't have the certain artifacts or, yeah. like that, or they were destroyed. Yeah. I'm curious. This is, so this is the major issue that I have with the MCU at the moment is that we're not building towards anything. I feel still sure. Like we don't have like the, the Thanos, right. That we got fucking, sprinkled in every single mcu movie you could possibly think of pretty much yes at a certain point right? yes yes yeah we, we got we got that and the fact that like you look at like moon knight and stuff like that that's not connected to anything no I don't not know, as like, no yeah not as right because like after this show i was so excited to see miss marvel is going to be in the in this film right i was like yes. oh wait i haven't seen that in any of the shows recently what the, right? they will return yeah um, they will return I don't. Moon Knight didn't have that. I don't think Moon Knight had one. Uh, Loki had a season two. I know that one. Loki's got season two. Yeah. Yeah. Loki's got season two. Um, Falcon. I don't think I remember seeing one. So you might be right yeah. on that. But we already know they're already making four. But yeah, it's not in the current slate of stuff. But yeah, no. I, I, I again, I totally understand that fatigue. I feel like I have some links to where I think that where I think they're going. I do find it, it is a little bit unwieldy at the moment. Um, but in this, this show, I think this mm -hmm. show gave me hope with that though. Oh hell yeah, it did. And because well, at yeah. the end with the oh good, say it, <laughs> say the it. Fucking that X Men theme that Do -do 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 -do. pops in. Oh my god, I was like, did I just fucking hear that right? I yeah. Rewind it again. And yeah. Like, oh yeah. They're fucking going there, dude. They're going there. So to, to full context, Bruno is searching into Kamala's DNA and her uh, heritage history just to see what what was her connection with this bangle. Turns out there's something a little extra going on in there. And uh, Bruno makes a drop where he says, there's uh, something going on with your genes. There's a uh, mutation. <laughs> and then I'm like, ooh! <laughs> I'm, at work. I'm at work just like... Holy shit, try not to lose my goddamn mind right now. Um, because then, yeah, you hear that fucking music, and I'm like, 
Oh, that's incredible. Which, I mean, shout out to uh, the Inhumans uh, for losing yet another one. Uh, <laughs> they just, I thought, hey, hey, Inhumans after uh, Doctor Strange, I thought you had a chance, but I, I guess not. Um, but yeah, uh, very excited how that dead, explains. Who is dead to them? <laughs> yeah, straight up, straight the hell up. But uh, yeah, I mean, my general theory on where the, this is going, uh, and I'll talk about that. I'll get into the X-Men in just a second. But um very much like phase one, the only thing that we were looking forward to is that the end credits of Iron Man said, I'm starting the Avengers initiative, right? That's all that was. Then every movie came out and it was standalone, kind of not connected, except for like maybe one or two little things that was leading you in a certain direction, right? Um, personally, for me, this feels very much like the start over, and that's why we have so many threads. But I do think that once we get to the end of whatever this phase is, that's when we'll start getting a clear picture of where the direction is really heading. And I still think it's definitely Secret Wars, but it also can definitely be also Dark Avenger shit. It can also be Young Avenger shit. So there's things that they've definitely set up. I'm 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 still in the like, I'm cool. Keep shoveling shit down my face. I'm still going to watch it. But well, that's the thing. So like, so yeah. like, I'm looking at phase one, right? I'm looking at phase one. The Tesseract was first shown in the first Avenger. Yes. Right. So that was, we're, we're just four movies in. Yes. At this point, right? Yeah. So like looking into that, they they, they start they they went up pretty quickly. They started building something pretty quickly with it, right? Yeah. You look at like what we're doing now with like Phase Four. I wouldn't even count Black Widow as Phase Four. Black Widow, I feel like it's its own thing <laughs> at this point because like it's a it's a previous story. And well, we get she, Yelena, which is technically tied to yeah. the Dark Avenger stuff. It's technically four. It's still four. Yeah. Yeah. But like looking at all these like shows that that are coming out it just feels yeah. weird it just feels it feels weird that we're not like building towards uh a bigger thing like even even uh, I do think we are though I do think you know, that we, yeah. I think now I think now finally I think it, it is starting to get to that point yeah because Dude, this Miss this Miss Marvel uh movie is, is it called Miss Marvel the new one or Mar the, the Marvels Ms. Marvel the Marvel the Marvel yeah. The movie's going to be fucking stacked. Yeah, it is. Like now it's going to be so stacked cuz yeah. we're going to get we're going to get obviously Carol Danvers, we're going to get yes. uh Amon, we're going to get um Deanna like, Pierce One Division. Pierce, yeah. So uh Monica Rambeau's daughter will yeah. be Yeah, we're going to get this. her in there. And then we're probably going to get Nick Fury. I would assume likely, so. I would assume right? so. Because Sword. Of where he is. Yeah. Yeah. So like Dude, this movie's gonna be stacked. <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, there, I'm excited. I was, honestly, I was not excited for uh, the Marvel movie because I wasn't the hugest fan of Captain Marvel. But man, I've, yeah, I'm fucking the Marvels. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm in because I like I, I really liked uh, Deanna Paris's uh, character from WandaVision, and I and I I'm a massive fan of Mon. So I'm very excited to see how this goes. And of course, the post credit scene that we do get, and I had to watch it twice because I, I okay. So in the comics. And this is also the big hubbub of the character over the last several weeks. Uh, the character in the show that we see as of right now uh, has a bangle that gives her her powers and makes her in big and does stuff like that, right? In the comics, she's an inhuman that uh, can morph her body and she has healing abilities. And in doing so, when she was scared, she turned into Miss Marvel. Like the like Carol Danvers character, she looks like her, oh, okay, okay, and basically okay. lived her identity as this white character and see how people responded to her, and that was the base of the character. Why people are kind of upset because they kind of took that out of the character with this version of this being this glowy thing, right? Which now they can undo with the X Men uh, reveal, uh, which is kind of cool. So essentially, they're swapping out X Men for Inhuman. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, I mean, she can still in Bacon. Yeah. Looking at her, dude, her beginning stuff was awesome. It was I love really, it. really good. I think with with more budget, I think it could look better because it didn't look great, but like yeah. it looked it looked it looked decent enough for a show. Yeah, I like, did yeah, love. Really I did, you know, I did. I think I did love how goofy it was for her to have like a normal head and then yeah. big body. Um, yeah, big body. Yeah, which I thought was fun. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like that's her whole point. Like she, yeah, she she has those powers. So like seeing her in uh, in the Marvels, I think with a bigger budget, it's gonna be really really cool too. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. You go, you go, you go. I was going to say, I assume that they're going to take the bangle away from her and then she'll, you know, her X-Men power will happen and then she'll actually have him beginning. That's what yeah, I'm assuming. The bangle. Yeah, without the bangle. So the reason why I had to watch this last scene twice, so the post credit scene is 
Uh, she is laying on her bed. Her mom is calling out to her. The bangle is glowing. And then all of a sudden she gets whipped, like turned into like this fucking whatever it is and thrown into the closet and out comes Carol Danvers, not her as Carol Danvers, which I originally thought because I read the comic and I thought, Oh, she turned into Carol Danvers. It, she now has that ability, but the way that Carol, the way that Carol Danvers the way she reacted, the way she's looking around this room and sees all these photos of her, she's like, no, 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 no. That's that the way they shot it is very specific. So we know that they swap places, which means uh, Miss Marvel is in space fighting monsters, <laughs> which is fucked up um, to think about. Yeah. But uh, so or she's, or she's with Fury. Or with Fury, uh, however they're doing. Something activated this bangle, which allowed that to happen. And I wonder if it's just the other bangle. Um, I'm very curious if that ends up being oh, the that case. Could be true. So yeah, maybe you know, mm -hmm. maybe so, maybe uh, uh, Carol Danvers has the other bagel and they connected together and they switched. That's what I'm uh, thinking. Like if I had to take a guess, like that's the closest thing to it. But again, then again, apparently this bangle can make you travel through time. I don't know. I don't know the logic of it. I'm only accepting. I mean, we did go time. back to 1947, so we kind of did go back in time. Yeah. So the, the it's weird because it's not the same time travel as low as uh, yeah. Loki, but whatever. Doesn't matter because uh, whatever happened did happen. Doesn't matter. Uh, um, but that's to me. Uh, I'm very curious to like what the rest of this stuff's going to go for that. But I still think at the end of the day, it's all leading to a big multiversal war. We're just going to introduce all these characters and we're going to kill off a bunch of the old ones. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how we'll go. Um, I, I, my, I always thought that their plan was to. Like I, I guess this is this is their plan with with uh, with Miss Marvel and yeah. um, Kamala Khan, but like I always thought like they would just show like do like a six episode show for every, each ep each character mm -hmm. and then throw them into the bigger MCU movies, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess. I so. don't know how I don't know how She Hulk is in any of this stuff with with that show coming out. Yeah. And then Moon Knight, Moon Knight is completely in its own thing. It seems like, I, mm -hmm. like I know there's touchstones and stuff like that, but like it doesn't seem like it's connected all too, too well. So I'm gonna spoil something for you, and don't worry, it's been on the internet for a while now. At the end of the at the end of the Eternals, there's a voice cameo of Blade. Oh, that's that's uh, that's uh, we already knew Blade. You already knew that, out. right? Yeah, yeah. Blade, so, Blade's already coming out. Yeah, and Blade is, has a movie coming out. Blade is in London. Moon Knight. Oh, you think Blade's gonna be with Moon Knight? Moon Knight's yeah. in London too, so yeah. I'm curious if that's where they'll go with it. But that's that, that's, that's, a, that's way out in the future. What <laughs> Oscar Isaac doesn't even want to do the show anymore at this point? <laughs> they set that shit up for a season two. I don't care what you say. Uh, but uh, so I assume that's what that that direction with that character can go in because um, they don't think they confirmed a season two for the show at all yet. Um, no. But then Deanna Paris going from WandaVision, ending up over there. And then, of course, you have um, She-Hulk, which she has ties to both the Fantastic Four and an Avenger. So she very much could be in any way when they do the next Avengers movie. She could be in there, um, yeah. especially as a surrogate from like if Mark Ruffalo is like not doing the character anymore. We don't know how that's going. Um yeah. But yeah, so that's, uh, there's also, ways. I, I think that's the that's I think that my main hiccup. I know we're we're a little bit off topic now, but no, my, my main hiccup is let the past die. <laughs> let let cat let fucking Chris Evans, let Robert Downey Jr. let let them all just like fade away mm -hmm. and let's introduce new people into the MCU. Yes. Let them be legacy characters. Like we don't we don't need like I legit don't need more Captain America movies. Sure. From 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 Chris Evans. Sure. Yeah. If if uh, Anthony Mackie's gonna take over, let the fucking guy take over this fucking shit. Yeah. Because like that 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 they're they're wish 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 washing about that. They're like he still needs to take the mantle for Captain America. I'm like, well, you guys had a whole fucking show about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you literally I, established this. <laughs> It's yeah, I, I will say people are just very wishy washy, and it's like, all right, I get it. People like Bucky, people like it, but you you establish that that's what that show is about, and that's what I enjoyed about the show. So please stick to it. And honestly, I I, I do think that they will they will stick to it, but 
There's yeah. a lot of wishy-washy stuff, including how people like describe the movie coming out. They're just very much like, uh, it's this uh, Falcon character. It's not the Falcon anymore. It's going to be somebody else. Like, what do you mean? He's going to be Captain America. Yeah, he's Captain America. He's taking over Captain America. But I, I do yeah. think they need to like stay, like like start veering away from the old characters. I agree. And start introducing these new characters. Because like, I feel like these new characters need time to breathe. Yeah, you know, I, I I agree as well, and I I don't I will say though I don't know if the six episode structure is worth it. I think doing two hour movies is probably the way to go, but I'm curious yeah. to like how that's that's affected them in production wise. Obviously, uh, we haven't talked about any of the uh, visual effects stuff happening right now in Marvel, which um, I don't know if you're aware. There has been some. Uh, uh, people writing about their time doing visual effects uh, as different projects, and uh, they are not very happy. And Marvel does not treat them very well, um, at least their deadlines in their companies yeah. don't treat them well. Yeah. So, you know, given with all that and how the shows are produced, uh, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I just feel like. I feel like the MCU does produce a lot of stuff, and I think maybe we don't need it to. We didn't need to actually be here, you know. We didn't need to have seven shows and like two, four movies a year, you know. I agree with this. I think it's too much. It's way too much. Do you think? Do you think this show could have could have been better if it was like a four episode arc? There are definitely things that I think that they could have handled. However, them juxtaposing, I would say, going to pack, uh, yeah, to Pakistan. Uh, Definitely need a time to breathe, so that's why I'm okay with it being sort of two episodes. Um, they all seem to travel in every one of these shows to like they, faraway places. They do, they do, but they use a back lot for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. For some <laughs> reason, we're still we're still in Jersey City, but we're supposed to be in Karachi. That's right. <laughs> oh, it's so awful. Um, but there are, but I you know, production stuff aside. Um, yeah, I think that this show was, and to me, the best, in my opinion, the best use of the six. However, I could still cut some things because, like we said, the bad guys are not very good. We really kind of glossed over them. They're Jin characters. They really do nothing. They're kind of useless except to further the plot of the ending of the season, which we'll talk about then real quick, which, of course, is it's not a big fucking uh, uh, person with colored powers versus another curl of powers fight each other. Almost it's, was. Almost was. Almost was, but I'm glad Almost they was. didn't. The fact that they yeah. went the route of like, no, I'm not going to fucking, I'll stop you from hurting people, but I will not fight you. We're going to have a fucking conversation. And I love that they kind of teased it throughout the whole episode of him having different moments with people, including like the Sheik with the, with the brother, like all these little things of like, you're not a bad guy. It's just you're in a situation that people are going to treat you. Yeah, you're in a bad situation. Yeah, you're in a bad situation. And some of that is beyond your control because of a racist lady that wants to stop you for some reason. Um, but yeah, you know, I... I I think she they go on that one. He just fucking went, went she, for it, dude. This she just went for straight it. Straight up. She's like, I'm going to get these fucking kids. <laughs> it's like, fire, th throw the firestorm. <laughs> it's like, it's fucking so many bullets. That should not be legal. One, like, are you no. going to shoot these kids all of a sudden? Straight up. Straight up. I did. I, yeah. it's, it's funny how, I mean, it isn't funny. That obviously that all the shows that I've seen so far have had those warnings now of just like this happens in front of a school or something bad happens, you know, like they Oh, we don't see those warnings here. Oh, you don't see them? Oh my god. No, we don't see the warnings. So. <sighs> yeah, so for Obi Wan and for this, they had those warnings. Yeah, no, we we didn't we didn't in the Disney plus here, there's no version <laughs> there's no warnings here. There's Maybe. a reason why. <laughs> yeah, there is definitely a reason why. Uh yeah. for sure. But um I don't know. I think that pretty much can say wraps up. Is there anything else you would want to bring up, talk about during the show? Um, no, I, I, one of the, the other thing that I, I do want to bring up is the, the mother daughter relationship yes. between the three generations oh, so of, of mothers and daughters and seeing that just like it, it, it like tears in my eyes. Cause like, dude, it, it, it I, I will say as, as a person that has went like as in, in a, in a family like that, it's hard, man, with family, and sometimes having that like those kind of discussions and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it's it's too it's too common. And finally finding some sort of like common place for all like the generations to like you know talk about it and have those like you know talk about it and put it out there. Yeah, you don't get that enough in in uh, in in our families. Nobody will talk, nobody talks about their feelings and stuff like that. So it, it's good. It was good to see that and see them like kind of bond. No, absolutely. Especially when they get, when, especially when they go back, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm Nightlight," and the dad's like, 
oh my god i can't believe it she's just like i told them all that they, 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 <laughs> they already know and i like how they all joked about it and stuff like that it's like that's what that that's it's a good family that's a good family yeah again it, it's it circumvents expectations it, you immediately think it's going to be one thing but then they go ahead and swerve it to the way because because at the beginning when, when she's thinking about that because she's I, i'm pretty sure she's uh uh kamala said like we don't like i don't know how my parents are going to react to this and what they're going to say to other people yes right yes and that is the the focal point i feel with a lot of parents and she she brought it up is like what are what what kind of face is her parents going to show to other people yeah mm-hmm Right when they go to like these uh, these gatherings at a mosque or to a temple or whatever it is, right? Yes. What what are they gonna tell people? Like our kids, like crazy, like a crazy person that's like flying in the sky and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Like that's that's it was cool that they brought that up, but at the end they kind of brought brought it back full circle. And it was all about family, but those discussions happen. Yeah. They, they, you know what I loved? I watched a video of uh, someone did an edit of the beginning of the season and all the way to the end when Kamala's telling them about going to AdventureCon and her mother's like, I don't trust you. Like straight yeah. up, like, I just don't trust you too. We trust her right at the very end. And I was like, fuck it. No, I felt it. Yeah. I felt yeah. it. Yeah. It was earned. <laughs> so, it was earned. This arcs was earned. We had, to go to, we had to go to a different country, but we earned it. Yeah, we had to go to a different country. We <laughs> had to prove that our grandmother didn't run away, and then we earned our love. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Um, the last bit I will say is I love, love, love the fact that it wasn't Bruno that made the suit, which is what I was expecting. But during the season, she's been collecting these pieces, which then her mother puts together this fucking fantastic looking outfit fantastic suit one of the best uh mcu creations both in comics and now on film um in my opinion it just looks incredible the way they introduced yeah. all that stuff we didn't even talk about the red Her- daggers <laughs> yeah I, I i could gloss over the, the red the whole plot with the red daggers like i feel yeah. like they're gonna be they're gonna be more later on yes the, this one is just kind of introducing them but they're her the little contraption comes up. Their world versus our world. I was like, I don't care about this. I really cannot <laughs> That's fair. This. That is fair. I also don't care at all. Um, yeah. So they kind of. I've had enough. I've had it. enough. Your world, my world bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is Asgard. Here's the nine realms. Here's yeah. Shang Chi and this other world that we go to. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, we're going through too many worlds. But uh, I, I like how <laughs> she got her her uh, outfit from her mom and then the name from her dad which was great yes which i guess is based in the character i, I didn't know that for uh her name so i thought that was yeah. wonderful um but yeah i think that pretty much wraps it up hard where can people find you on the net uh you can find me at beard and the hair pretty much everywhere except youtube is beard and the hair gaming i got two videos coming up next Ooh. week i got i got i got a review for cuphead and a boss review for cuphead it's gonna be great oh I'm very very excited there you go um for the dlc oh my god i'm i've been putting out the dlc for so long i've been waiting meaning to jump into it just never got to it <laughs> um but uh yeah other than that that's really it i'm excited to get back to pip this week obviously this is going out probably next week or something right yeah i'll probably throw it out monday or something um, Yeah. so so we already recorded for pip but I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into it. Yeah, I'm very excited to start that podcast because it's been a long time since we have all got together and talked about all the fun things that we love and well, still think new new, about new them. structure and everything too. Yeah, hopefully, right? Hopefully, hopefully, we finalize that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. But no, this was awesome. I appreciate you uh, inviting me to. Um, no, talk about it. I guess- wanted to talk about it with somebody. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and I've been holding it in since, obviously, I said, like, do you want to do it, t- you want to do it tonight and, and, uh, or tomorrow? And you're like, tomorrow. I was like, okay, it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But ultimately, it's just because this show uh, gave me – I've I watched so much stuff. I watched Barry. I've watched Better Call Saul. I've watched uh, – you know, Obi-Wan was coming out at the same time as this. I did not care. I wanted every, – every day, I wanted to watch goddamn Ms. Marvel. Um, so yeah, to have someone in the same chat as me every time and then writing comments was perfect. So again, thank you yeah. so much for being here. And of course, you can find me over at The Point in Progress, which you can find me on Twitter at THT Mario Rivera, no longer Night Mute City. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. And until next time, class is dismissed. Why? Did you hear something? Come on, love. What does it feel like? Cosmic. I always thought I wanted this kind of life. But I never imagined any of this. Do you even know what you are?